Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our weekly show where we get up here and share the magic of mushrooms. This week, we're talking about a mushroom that has a long history of use for medicinal purposes. It's probably the most storied and most studied mushroom of all time. We're talking about turkey tail mushroom. We're gonna be diving into how it grows. We're gonna be talking about the benefits and some of the different compounds in turkey tail mushrooms and some of the different reasons why people would use this amazing mushroom. So if you wanna to jump to any point in the video, timestamps are in the description and uh, yeah as always thanks so much for being here and without further ado let's get into the show welcome back to our weekly show where me and Tegan get up here and talk about the magic of mushrooms or share the magic of mushrooms and this week we are super excited because we're talking about uh, one of the most ancient medicinal mushrooms of all time so we're talking about a mushroom that has a really long history of use um, it's probably one of the most storied of all the medicinal mushrooms and one of the most studied in the world, but it is also one of the most common mushrooms, even though the benefits are pretty uncommon, as you'll hear when we talk about pretty soon. Um, actually finding this mushroom in the woods is pretty darn common. Really easy. Yeah, if you've gone hiking in the woods whatsoever, there's a really good chance that you have seen this mushroom. And of course, the mushroom we're talking about today is turkey tail otherwise known as Trimedes versicolor or Coriolis versicolor. And why don't you do a quick close-up of that, that nice. mushroom? So um, Trimedes and the naming of the, the meaning of the name Trimedes versicolor, Trimedes means the thin one and versicolor meaning various colors. And that's kind of what defines turkey tail mushrooms. So it's really thin. Um, it's kind of like a thin shelf mushroom and it has these striations of color on the top that can actually be quite beautiful. Um, it's kind of fuzzy on the top and on the bottom it's a polypore mushroom. So it has um, pores instead of gills and that's kind of what defines turkey tail mushroom. So it's a beautiful mushroom. Of course it gets the name turkey tail because well it kind of looks like a turkey's tail. Yeah, and these ones, they're grown a little straighter than usual because we grew these at home on bags. Um, they were assembled on our moss wall that we have over there. <laughs> so we did just pull them off for this video, which is hence the moss. But typically they have a more rounded appearance. Uh, yeah. So it is very turkey tail like. Yeah. And you'll find them growing on dead logs in the forest or dying logs. They grow mainly on hardwoods, but they will actually grow on softwoods. So like I said, they're super prolific. They grow absolutely everywhere and they're super common to find. Now, they're really easy to grow as well. Yes. You can grow them no problem um, on your typical fruiting block. Um, but a lot of the times they will just be wild harvested, um, even for commercial purposes, just because they are so prolific in where they grow. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what they, what they taste like and how they're not a gourmet mushroom. All right. Yeah, so because they are a harder mushroom, they're woodier, they're not used in gourmet cooking, they're not sliced up, fried, and made into a dish. So these are commonly, traditionally made by cutting them into slices, boiling them in water for long times to make a tea also known as a hot water extract. And that, because the beneficial compounds are water soluble, they're pulled out during the hot water extraction process or the tea making, and all these compounds are left in the liquid that you drink after. Now it's a very earthy mushroom. The taste is not off-putting, I find. It's slightly earthy, but there's no bitterness. Um, it's just a very natural, earthy, a little bit of a mushroom flavor. So nothing too appalling, really easy to add to coffee tea or just drink on its own as a tea if you're preparing the hot water extract yourself. Uh, and you could also even use it in a soup broth or anything like that. Yeah, so in terms of uh, palatability, I guess, for turkey tail mushroom, I mean, it's one of the best. It's not super bitter like reishi and it's easy to make your own extracts because like Tegan mentioned, the beneficial compounds, which we'll talk about in a second, of turkey tail mushroom are all totally water soluble. So they'll be pulled out of those tough cell walls of the mushroom and made bioavailable by simply making a tea or of course on a commercial scale by making uh, a hot water extract and then spray dried into a powder. Yeah, and if you are buying a supplement that has been prepared by someone else, make sure that it has gone through a hot water extraction process because some people will simply pulverize, grind it into a fine powder and sell just the mushroom fruiting body. But you might not be getting all those beneficial compounds because your body does have a hard time digesting them as is. Yeah, and I guess by that same token, if you're gonna be harvesting your own turkey tail mushrooms, don't just go gnaw on them. <laughs> <laughs> Make them into a hot water extract. I've never actually done that, but I, I can't imagine it'd be all that tasty. 
Probably not. Uh, so yeah, like I said, turkey tail mushroom has a long history of use. Um, it's been used for thousands of years for medicinal purposes. Um, and it became pretty famous more recently as well um, because of a TED talk by uh, Paul Stamets, um, who's a pretty famous mycologist. He did a TED talk that's actually got millions of views, so there's a really good chance that you've seen it already, but if not, I'll link to it in the description of this video. Um, and the TED talk is called uh, Six Ways Mushroom Can Save the World, I think, or How Mushrooms Can Save the World, or maybe even Can Mushrooms Save the World. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but uh, again, I'll link to that in the description. But one of the six ways, uh, he talks about turkey tail mushrooms. And he tells a story about his mother. Um, it's quite an emotional story about his mother who uh, had breast cancer and was going through all these treatments. And one of her doctors recommended um, trying as well turkey tail mushroom. So along with all the other conventional treatments that she was doing, she was also using turkey tail mushroom. And then at the end of the talk, uh, Paul Stamets brings his mother up on stage, who is obviously doing much better and she's still alive. And um, it's like really quite an emotional story and really powerful. And it just kind of, you know, talks about or resonates about the, the, the potential power of turkey tail mushroom. So it's really cool. If you haven't seen that talk, there's a lot of other interesting things that uh, Paul Stamets talks about in that video as well. So uh, be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already. If you're not one of the six million or whatever <laughs> views that's already uh, been done on that video. So what is it in turkey tail mushrooms that leads to all these benefits? So turkey tail mushroom is absolutely jam packed with beneficial beta D glucans. Now we do have a whole video that I did on beta D glucans and talking about how mushrooms support your immune system. But since turkey tail is kind of the king of beta D glucans, it's the most beta D glucan rich mushroom of them all. I think it makes sense to talk about that a little bit more again today. So beta D glucans are a type of polysaccharide. Polysaccharide is just a word that means many sugars. It comes in lots of different shapes and sizes and they interact with our bodies in different ways. Now there's different types of polysaccharides. Like I mentioned, there's alpha linked polysaccharides, which is the kind of polysaccharides you'll find in potatoes and starch and rice and all that kind of stuff. Easy to digest. Easy to digest. Yeah, we're kind of like, we're built to digest alpha linked polysaccharides. But there's also beta-linked polysaccharides, and our physiology is not designed to break that down. But we are innately um, designed to interact with these beta-linked polysaccharides, um, and they can affect our immune systems or modulate our immune systems in, in different ways. So turkey tail is actually called a biological response modifier um, because of the way it can interact with and modulate our immune system. And the, the simple story or the short story is that these beta D glucans can interact directly with the cells in our immune system, uh, it can activate it. And that is why beta D glucans have such a powerful effect on our, our immune system, which cascades into all these other different effects. So again, there's lots of different shapes of beta D glucans. It's not just in turkey tail, it's in all medicinal mushrooms. But turkey tail contains um, very specific polysaccharides or protein bound polysaccharides that have been isolated and studied for lots of really cool things. Yeah, two which are of special note, which are polysaccharide peptide or PSP and polysaccharide K or also known commercially as Crestin. Right, so these again are two protein bound polysaccharides that have been isolated from different um, strains of turkey tail mushroom. So PSK was the first one to be discovered and isolated in Japan and I believe that was in the 1960s. Um, and there's been lots of studies that have come out of that. And then PSP was discovered a little later or isolated a little later in China in the 1980s. Um, but both of these have some pretty remarkable research around them. and. Crestin in particular has been most commonly used as like an adjunct to traditional cancer treatments. Kind of like the story that Paul Stamets was telling about his mother. Um, that's kind of what PSK is used for. There is lots of studies on this, so uh, we're not clinicians, so obviously we'll just link to the studies where you can kind of check them out. It's pretty amazing. And actually, if you, if you start to dig into this research, I think you'll find it quite fascinating. There's also been lots of studies on, well, not lots of studies, but one in particular on uh, breast cancer, which I'll link to as well. Um, so you can go ahead and check out those studies if you like. What are some other interesting benefits to turkey tail mushroom? I know gut health is an interesting benefit. Yeah, um, turkey tail has been historically used for gut health and it's not the only mushroom, right? There's, there's some other mushrooms, like I believe last week or the week before we were talking about lion's mane and the way that people use lion's mane and how lion's mane has historically been used for gut health. So there's some of these things that translate across different mushroom species. 
but turkey tail in particular um, has some of these potential gut health benefits. The other thing too is turkey tail's potential to act as a prebiotic, right? Which is, is I think that's kind of unique to turkey tail. Um, not quite. Okay. No. <laughs> Shows what I know about prebiotics. But it, it, has been, uh, it has been shown to act as a prebiotic and to modulate human intestinal microbiome composition, which is kind of yeah. what you just talked about. Um, but in terms of prebiotic, I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's very neat. Other thing as well, we talked last week about chaga and how it's a powerful antioxidant. But again, some of these things translate across different mushrooms. So what about turkey tail as its potential to be an antioxidant? Yeah, turkey tail has an oppressive array of antioxidants and one study identified 38 phenolic compounds along with other flavonoids like quercetin. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why turkey tail is such a famous and, you know, has such a long history of use. Um, one of the theories, of course, is that it's, it's everywhere. So like, um, like way back, say thousands of years ago, if you were looking for different plants and mushrooms in the forest, turkey tail would be everywhere. So maybe that's why it has one of the most longest histories of use, but like, when you look at some of the compounds in there, how rich they are, beta D-glucans, and you look at some of the studies they've done, um, it, it shows a lot more reasons why this mushroom has had such a long standing history. It's really stood the test of time um, because we're still talking about it today. So if you're walking around in the forest and you want to find some turkey tail mushrooms, how good at identifying do you have to be? Are there any other species that might have some toxic effects that might look similar? Or what do you recommend? I know we typically don't recommend people foraging if they don't know what they're looking for, or they're not with someone who's knowledgeable on what they're looking for. What do you think about turkey tail mushrooms? Yeah, so turkey tail mushrooms, they're actually not the easiest to identify because there's lots of things that kind of look similar. Um, there's a lot of things that grow on dead trees, a lot of different mushrooms. Right, yeah. and I guess it would be totally regionally specific. So. I always have this kind of blanket answer is like check with your local mycological society, which is which, you know, it's kind of a bummer because you just want to know like the cut and dry answer. But um, th I mean, there is a way to identify turkey tail, and once you know it, and once you maybe grow it or feel it and look at it, you'll really know. Um, but there is other mushrooms that look superficially similar, and they're all just called false turkey tail. But there there's lots of different species, um, different trimedi species, and different. Um, I'm forgetting the, the genus name for the other ones that are false turkey tail. But um, a lot of the times it, maybe they won't be fuzzy on top or maybe they'll have big pores or maybe they'll actually have, you know, look like turkey tail but have gills instead. Um, so as always with, you know, wild mushrooms, um, some of them can make you sick. Um, some uh, wild mushrooms can actually kill you. So it's always best to know what you're doing and go with someone uh, with your local micro, like with your local mycological society or with um, somebody who knows what they're doing and knows the mushrooms in the area. But again, turkey tail mushrooms, you know, they're, they're, once you know, they're reasonably easy to identify. Yeah. Um, and if you have found some and you've properly identified them, definitely bring them home and try making a hot water extract, making yourself a medicinal tea. It's actually quite simple. You can find a lot of recipes or techniques online. They're all pretty much the same. And we recommend it. Yeah. So yeah, if you were to do that, if you were to make a hot water extract of turkey tail mushrooms, what would you do? Well, you would take it, cut it up into little chunks, to smaller pieces, put it in a pot of water and simmer it. So not a hard rolling boil, but a low soft simmer boil for a few hours on the stovetop. And you'll see a nice rich color draw out of it, kind of like a, a sun tea. Does, is that a proper explanation of the color? <laughs> it's not dark like coffee, you can see through it. Um, yeah, and then just strain off the little bits after you've simmered it for a few number of hours and you can drink it hot, you can put it in a container, store it in the fridge, it will keep for a little while in the fridge and have a shot every day, have a little cup of tea every day. It doesn't have to be hot to consume it, you can consume it cold. You can put it into a recipe, like throw it into your soup or your stew or your chili or whatever you're making. Yeah, and of course, if you didn't want to go out in the woods and harvest wild turkey tail and make your own tea, there's lots of different ways you can get turkey tail. Of course, there's lots of commercially available products and typically it's the same process as Tegan just described where you make a hot water extract, but instead of- Big scale. On a, on a bigger scale, but then that liquid is spray dried into powder. So it's typically spray dried into powder and then it's either encapsulated or just in a powder that you can put in your coffee or tea or your food or whatever. Um, and when you buy from a reputable source, they're going to test the active compounds and list it on the package and they'll tell you per one gram or whatever their serving size is, you're getting this much beta-glucan. So it's really, it's a lot easier if you're looking for a specific dose, maybe you're using it for a certain disease or condition. 
it is easier to dose yourself properly and more accurately if you do buy something that's been tested, standardized, and measured out. That's a really good point, I guess, and you, you'd know what you're getting. Yeah. Um, so say someone, your doctor recommends three grams per day. It would be pre you'd be pretty accurate taking one of those scoops or a couple capsules, whatever it was measured out to, and dosing yourself that way. Versus making your own tea. Yeah, because then you, you're really not quite sure how much to drink or how much you're actually getting. Right. So, But if you just want to try it as a little hobby, make yourself some hot water extracts, fun fun activity. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's a really cool mushroom. Um, so again, to kind of sum it all up, turkey tail is a polypore mushroom that grows super commonly in the, in the woods um, and has a lot of beneficial beta D-glucans, but has also had some other compounds extracted, most notably PSP and PSK, and is, which are typically used as an adjunct to traditional um, cancer therapies, but also has some other benefits like gut health and uh, antioxidants. To name a few, there's others. There's others. Right. This name. is just to name our few short that stand out to us. Great, so as always, if you have questions about turkey tail, I highly suggest uh, checking out the links in the description if you wanna go dive a little bit deeper. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, anything you missed or any, anything we missed or anything you wish we would have talked about, feel free to pop them in the comments below. I uh, read every single one of them and I love uh, hearing the feedback. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Yeah. Take care.